Yeah, this talk is about SMS, external inter SMS interface for Osmo MSC, not USSD anymore. And uh, I'm going to talk about SMS in general. What is it? Some, some interesting facts about SMS. How does it work in commercial networks, MAP or TCAP based? And how is it implemented in Osmo code, Osmo code? Interest infrastructure. So, what's uh, what's SMS for 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 a regular user? It's a kind of service that enables you to exchange short text messages, and it's uh, basically available in almost any network and supported by almost any phone today. And uh, for an Osmocom developer, it's uh, first of all it's a protocol stack, and it's kind of complicated protocol stack. There is like control layer, re relay layer, and transport layer, and only then application layer. That's exactly where you type your text. And it's a nice target for fuzzing. There is a talk uh, SMS of this. And uh, they actually managed to break some phones during this fuzzing session. If you're interested, you can check it out. And uh, some of the most uh, important specifications, as Harald already mentioned, there are basically two kinds of SMS. One is cell broadcast, and this is uh, behind the scope of my talk. I'm going to talk about point-to-point uh, -point SMS. Uh, well, the first specification is mostly about the transport protocol. The second one is about uh, the control protocol and the relay protocol. And of course, MAP it describes how should uh, different parts of the core network infrastructure interact with each other. Uh, so small, some history. The initial idea of uh, short mess having short messages uh, appeared in early 80s. So there, there was kind of cooperation between two German and French guys. I don't remember exactly. Friedel. Hillebrand, Brand, Hillebrand, sorry, and uh, Bernard uh, Gilly. Oh. <laughs> Anyone knows how to pronounce this correctly? The sec <laughs> Gilbert. Okay, the and the second line, yes. <laughs> anyway, so they in uh, 1984 they developed the initial context of. SMS, uh, con concept of SMS messages, and the key idea was to use uh, uh, signaling channels of uh, GSM. At that time, it was uh, voice, uh, highly voice optimized, and we see similar problem today with LTE. It's a pure packet switched, and there is nothing, almost nothing for SMS and for uses and even calls. And uh, Hillebrand actually analyzed uh, some uh, uh, teletext messages and some something else I don't remember and decided that uh, this limitation, 160 char 7V characters should be enough for everyone to express all the minds. And Twitter actually is following quite similar uh, limitation, but it actually it's uh, 140 as far as I remember for any kind of... Well, because you can tweet using SMS. Yeah, and the, 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 the prefix is uh, <laughs> Yes, it will be something about it later. So in, in February 1985, uh, uh, the first proposal of SMS uh, that he in initiated uh, actually the development of SMS. So it was accepted, uh, approved by uh, uh, GSM Group. And uh, in uh, GSM 0203, there were specified two types of SMS, SMS point-to-point -point and SMS telebroadcast. And uh, in, in December of 1992, the first mess SMS message with text Merry Christmas was sent. And it was in, in, in the UK over a Vodafone network. And then in 2010, uh, around 6 billion, 6 trillion SMS text messages were sent. 
And today, I think they are mostly deprecated by some instant messengers like Telegram and so on. You just you need they don't need to pay. And but still, they are actively used for like two-factor authentication or some different notifications and and so on. So some interesting facts about SMS, uh, like a SMS can not only be sent to your phone, it can be sent to your SIM card or from SIM card. And you can watch the secret life of SIM cards for more details. They can also like establish GPRS channels. That's not, not the limit. And uh, another interesting fact uh, is that SMS can be basically sent over GPRS. And that's uh, more efficient, uh, unlike SDCCH, because packet switch domain is kind of TDMA over TDMA, and multiple subscribers can share the same time slot. And um, I think, personally, that silent SMS doesn't make any sense, because you can basically just establish an SDCCH channel, and the result would be the same, if you have any ideas about it. Uh, you can establish uh, a channel if you have control of the, the base station or the BSC, but if you're an outside operator and you have only interface to a SMSP, then silent SMS makes sense because yes. you don't control the network. So whatever the net network operator is providing a service to law enforcement or, or whatever, their silent SMS makes sense. But I think they could provide some kind of service that would just establish an SDC channel instead of designing this behavior of mobile station just to receive and uh, not not indicate this SMS arrival. You have, you have SMS going to SIM card and stuff like that, like application, other than the showing to the user? Yes, just, uh, yes. But uh, this silent SMS, I don't know, for me it's kind of useless. Mm -hmm. just, just to establish a channel. Maybe there are some other use cases. I mean, if you want something to establish a channel which is both authenticated and... Uh, yeah. Yes. If you want to establish a channel that is uh, authenticated and ciphered uh, at one time out, you actually have to start a transaction with the MS and actually do something. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. So that could be used for that. Okay, and uh, so I already mentioned you can tweet using SMS. And uh, I think Twitter was inspired by this limitation. And uh, why do we need an external interface for SMS? Well, we have kind of uh, built in SMS center in Osmo MSC, but it's a kind of rudimentary implementation from old uh, network in the box times. It's uh, very limited and buggy. Uh, like uh, a few weeks ago, I've been writing some unit tests for it, and it's far from being perfect. And uh, normally, uh, SMS Center is a kind of separate entity of JSM network, and uh, we need to be able to talk to some commercial implementations of SMS centers or implement our own SMS Center. Or if you even have, uh, like, uh, Multiple mobile switching centers, they definitely would need to connect to some single SMS entity. There is no need to maintain separate databases. Now, Osmo MSC also does support SMPP protocol, but uh, the problem of this approach is that uh, it involves uh, some kind of transcoding between TPDU, the transport protocol and uh, SMPP protocol, and that's, that may be something that's not desired. And uh, I will make it a bit... Yes, so this is kind of graphical representation of the SMS protocol stack, and it's a bit different uh, on the radio, radio access network and uh, different uh, on the core network. So. You have your application layer, some basically it's just uh, text of your SMS or whatever. You optionally might have a user data header. It's used in case of multi-part SMS, where you can indicate which part is it and how many of them is still pending. There is also, next is the 
transport layer, transport protocol. This is probably the most interesting protocol. It's uh, lots of fields. You can check the specifications. Uh, relay protocol is basically used to acknowledge the reception and storage of SMS. It means that some entity has received this message and it's, it was stored and there is no need to care about it. And the control protocol is used just to acknowledge uh, reception but not storage of SMS. And uh, when it comes to MSC, we basically replace uh, both control and relay protocols with MAP. So we encapsulate the TPDU together with uh, the application part into MAP forward short message. And then it uh, travels to some SMS center or some other gateway MSC. So there's some, some messages, uh, the most important for us, as you can see, CP protocol is quite easy. There is CP data that's uh, commonly used to transfer some RPDU payload. CP ACK, it means that, okay, I received this. And CP error means that uh, something wasn't received or uh, RP data or is RP SMMA. RP data is used to carry TPDU. It's uh, the transport protocol. And SMMA is used to notify the network that some mobile station has uh, memory available to receive at least one SMS. There is also RP ARC, RP ROR. It's probably when, when there is no space left to store SMS, mobile would send uh, RP ROR message with proper case. And then on the transport layer, we have uh, like SMS submit, SMS deliver messages, deliver a report. And some SMS commands, uh, as far as I remember, it can be used to, for example, remove already sent SMS from SMS center. Uh, this, there was something about this in specifications, or even modify. So you can basically send some SMS and then modify it. If, if, you, if you are quick, you know, I think. So that's how it works in commercial networks. Uh, there is uh, SMS center, there is mobile station. So when uh, you send some mobile originated SMS, first of all, of course, the channel establishment, uh, authentication and ciphering optionally happening between the MSC and the mobile station, or sometimes uh, SJSN also can be kind of uh, a relaying entity of mobile originated or mobile terminated SMS. Uh, Mobile station basically sends CP data, like not SMS submit encapsulated into RP data, encapsulated into CP data. The network just confirms that it uh, just received this payload and sends, uh, now it requests some information from the VLR. And usually some commercial networks have uh, kind of uh, gateway MSC. So it's kind of uh, central router for for commercial networks. So your serving MSC basically initiates TCAP transaction to the gateway mobile switching centers and uh, forwards uh, the TPDU payload in, inside, inside uh, this map uh, mobile originated forward short message. And the gateway MSC would take care about uh, forwarding this uh, message to the SMS center where it's going to be stored. So as soon as SMS Center confirms that uh, message was received, we actually send some <coughs> acknowledged message on, on the map side, and then we confirm to the mobile station that your message were stored. So we say RPAC. And then mobile station confirms that it's received this RPAC and sends CPAC, just to be sure. Okay, and uh, in case of failed delivery, the SMS center may reject this SMS, and so we say NAC, and we say RP error with some calls that something went wrong. And uh, in case of mobile terminated SMS, things get more complicated. Like, uh, first of all, the SMS center forwards mobile terminated message to the gateway MSC, 
then uh, the gateway MSC needs to know which MSC to contact, where is the subscriber for which this message uh, is going to be forwarded. So it contacts uh, to the HLR uh, using maps and routing in for a uh, short message, as far as I remember. And uh, it uh, basically indicates the MS MSI SDN of subscriber and the result, uh, the response should contain either IMC or LMSI. It's a kind of team C, but on, on the map. And uh, the MSC number that we need to establish uh, TCAP transaction with. So we establish transaction and forward mobile terminated short message to the serving SJSN or MSC of subscriber. Then there is a paging request happening, again, channel establishment. And then the serving SMS just forwards it so using the same process like uh, RP data, CP data, and so on. So RP, RP AC from MS triggers uh, map uh, forward MT forward message AC, and then it's uh, it's uh, delivered. But, but we are we are we are not implementing uh, TCAP nor MAP in Osmocom. We are using GSAP. And there are a few reasons. Uh, one of them is that we don't have reliable implementation of MAP in C yet. We need to deal with ASN1 encoding. And uh, we also need to deal with some lower layer protocols of MAP, like we, in which it's uh, in, being encapsulated, encapsulated. So we use GSAP. It stands for Generic Subscriber Update Protocol. It's a simple TLV-based protocol that runs over TCP, IPA connection. And uh, we basically abuse Osmo HLR as uh, the kind of GSAP router. Like there, there is no such thing uh, like uh, gateway MSC. We use HLR for that. So everything goes through Osmo HLR. And uh, over a single TCP IPA connection, there, there is no such thing like multiple connections. And yeah, there is no direct communication between the core network entities. Everything is done through Osmos HLR. So we have the following GSAP message types. Basically, they are quite similar to MAP messages to be, to be able to easily convert between GSAP and MAP. So there is uh, mobile originated forward short message, uh, like request uh, result and error. That's usual variations of messages in GSAP mobile terminated message and ready for short message. Uh, this message is used when either mobile station indicates that it has some memory available, either it wasn't, uh, wasn't connected to the network, and when it uh, does IMC attach, the MSC should notify the SMS center that the subscriber is ready now. So we have some basic information elements like destination address, originating address, uh, uh, the TPDU itself, uh, and more messages to send. That's uh, more or less generic information elements from the map specifications. Alert reason, alert reason, of course, also a part of this specification. But since we don't have TCAP, we somehow need to distinguish between kind of transmissions of SMS because we're st still using a single TCP connection. So we basically expose uh, RP message reference that's, uh, that's used to kind of uh, properly ask uh, to some, like to, to acknowledge some RP data or indicate some error. And we also expose uh, the cause information element because we don't uh, implement any kind of mapping between generic cause and and uh, RP specific. So that's how it looks like. Or probably. So the, the first part is the same. Mobile station establishes uh, some uh, SDCCH channel, for example, sends uh, RP data with SMS submit. The network uh, forwards it uh, directly to the HLR using mobile originated forward short message request. HLR should look for uh, the destination address and should find the SMS center 
and just forward this message to the to the SMS center. And from the SMS center, we get either the result, which means uh, successful delivery of this SMS, so we RP acknowledge the SMS. Either we get some error, and we indicate this to the mobile station. So it's quite quite simple. And uh, mobile terminated. SMS delivery is a bit a bit more complicated. I don't know. Can you see it or not? Like on the top part, we have like SMS center basically initiates mobile terminated SMS transmission, and at that point, it doesn't know the message reference that's going to be used used because it's assigned by Osmo MSC. So we use any any invalid value for message reference. Uh, so it's getting forwarded to Osmo HLR. Osmo HLR uh, connects to Osmo MSC, forwards this message. Then uh, Osmo MSC establishes uh, an SDCCH channel with subscriber and just forwards it. So we also get either MT forward the same result or error message. So what we basically support is uh, mobile originated message delivery, mobile terminated message delivery, and uh, kind of alerting when mobile station has some memory to receive some SMS. We have, uh, I think, more or less complete uh, TTC and testing coverage. Uh, the only part that's probably missing now is uh, proper handling of multi-part SMS. The problem is that uh, uh, the SMS center may indicate that there are some more messages to be sent. Like if you if you are running behind the limit of uh, 160 characters, so the MSC should basically keep connection until the last part. All the parts are delivered because it's, uh, there is no need to uh, terminate and establish connection again and again. It would just waste resource wastement. But the, the current uh, reference counting implementation in Osmo MSC doesn't allow to implement this properly. So I'm looking forward for the patch of NIRS to be merged. So hopefully it will make everything simpler. Uh, yeah, regarding the GPRS packet switch domain, I don't think uh, it's that important for us to support this kind of delivery at the moment. And another important thing is that uh, SMS over GSAP breaks SMPP support. You cannot have uh, SMPP and SMS over GSAP at the same time. Because, for example, if uh, some message is getting sent over SMPP, it can be forwarded to Osmo HLR because we don't tag from where does it come from. It can be solved, I think. So that's why it's disabled by default. And if you need to enable it, you just go to the VTI and just set this SMS over the sub parameter. So I was going to show some message examples in Wireshark. The, the recent version of Wireshark was should support uh, all GSAP messages we have at the moment. And uh, here is what's happening. So this, it, this is mobile originated, uh, message tra uh, mobile originated SMS transmission. So mobile station initiates a connection with t t service request with short message service. And then it just sends the, as I already said, RP data in, inside CP data. So the network does acknowledge reception of this, and then it basically forwards uh, to the HLR. I will somehow make it bigger. So we MC is a mandatory part of every GSAP message. Then we have message reference. It was uh, 42 in this particular example. We have destination address. It's uh, most likely the number of SMS center, and we have originating number, originating addresses that's just MSI's DN of subscriber that sent this SMS, and we simply encapsulate TPDU of, of SMS into our GSAP message, just like MAP does. So there was no text. 
and uh, then we receive uh, acknowledge, acknowledgement for that message reference. It means that uh, SMS was delivered. There is also, uh, I think, ready for a short message. Yes, it wants, uh, when the mobile station notifies that it has some memory available, so we just forward it to the HLR, to the SMS center. There is mobile, mobile terminated. Uh, message example so it's uh, this uh, this moment uh, was my hlr initiates transmission to osma msc then we initiate pa paging procedure then we get paging response sent this to the mobile station and so on so mobile sta as soon as mobile station acknowledge this uh, rp data we just send uh, forward as some result with the same message reference that's the key point I think that's more or less it. If you have any questions, microphone is yours. So, uh, so yeah, the question is, uh, why are you routing it through Osmo HLR? I guess because you need some information stored there, but uh, why it was decided to do it like that and not have some other process outside of Osmo HLR to actually request information to Osmo HLR when it was needed? Well, uh, it was a kind of a decision to make a HLR kind of a central gateway like commercial networks uh, do. But in the case of commercial networks, it's called gateway MSC, but we have kind of gateway HLR. So it's simpler and probably Harald can but still, uh, the gateway is it's a separate entity, right, from the HLR? Or no, from it's, the MSC a, it's, in that a, case? it's a part of Osmo HLR. And we are well, going yeah, in, in our case it is, but not in commercial networks. Not in commercial right? networks, of course. Uh, HLR in general is not dealing with SMS delivery. Yeah, so I'm, ju I'm, I'm just wondering why not just having it in another process, you know? Uh, we would have to um, kind of complicate our G uh, GSAF connections. We, we would uh, have to implement direct communication between like SMS Center and OSMA MSC. And in our case, OSMA MSC is just a TCP client that connects to OSMA HLR, and that's it. So, yeah, basically you want to have a simple setup for the non-MAP use case. And simple means you want to have as little of the complexity of setting up, you know, extra point codes and extra routes and, uh, of, and, and all the kind of stuff that you would need um, on whatever level. You just want to have a simple single um, a TCP connection that, uh, and that's how uh, Osmo MSC has always handled it. And now you want to be able to swap in either to use Osmo HLR or to swap in whatever other gateway. So I'm, I'm not sure what advantage it would be to split that up into separate functionalities because either you want to interoperate with a map or a diameter or whatever external network and then you need that gateway and for sure you will not use Osmo HLR or you will be using Osmo HLR but then there's no point in having a, a gateway. So I think there's a very clear distinction between those two use cases and I don't think there's a need to mix them in any way and, and complicate uh, the, the, the network setup. Actually, maybe one can comment because they are at the moment developing some kind of converter between just GSAP and MAP. So yeah, it works. <laughs> it just works. Yeah, it's, so one port is okay, so So they they basically don't use Osmo HLR. They yeah, so we don't use Osmo HLR as far as that. So it's it's okay. You just use uh, all. GSAP traffic on one port, so it's, it's okay. Is, that, is this gateway of the sort? No. Okay. <laughs> because uh, we use uh, TCAP and MAP and uh, SS7 stack, it's not open source, so that's, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> so now we can pretty much uh, split up SMSC from yeah. MSC using this protocol and move SMPP, for example, there, in this case, Definitely. the problem gone. That's uh, actually how commercial mobile switching centers work. There is no SMSC in them. It's usually a separate process. So related question then, how did you test it? What you used on the other end of this connection? I usually use TTCN three test cases. 
Of course, you can implement something in C, but it just works with TTCN. I, I, I'm actually thinking about some little proof of concept implementation of SMS Center that would just store something in the SQL database just to show that it works. Maybe, but uh, I would need to do this IPI. I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. That would probably take. Makes sense. Any more questions? I think. Okay. I think Holger had some questions. Ah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.